Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how incredibly easy it is to give some personality to a pair of jeans or even a jean jacket. So we're gonna actually do a project on this pair of jeans inspired by a design that I saw on Pinterest. But before I do that, I wanna show you some projects that I made, I think two years ago. Um, one of them is this pair of boyfriend jeans. And what I did here was I used white magnolia ink and my Mandela lace stencil. Actually, I used this one. It's been used 40 or 50 times and it looks terrible, but it still works just fine. This is my relatively newer one. Uh, but I used that and this pair of jeans has been washed at least 10 times since then. Um, they don't currently fit me because I have the COVID-20 on my body right now, but I would love to get back into these for summer because um, they were just super cute. So that's one idea that I wanted to share with you. And when I'm all finished, if you're interested, just say link and I'll get you a link to that. This is another project that I did a few years ago. Same stencil design. It's called a Mandela Lace Stencil. Same white ink. And I just put it on the back of this jean jacket from Old Navy. So isn't that cute? You can do all kinds of different things. You can do the cuffs. You could do a front pocket if you wanted. Um, so, I mean, and this has been washed a couple times and it's, it's still looking great. So there's tons of different things that you could do. Um, and this is a very popular design to use. It's called a Mandela Lace. And I want to give you guys a quick little rundown on stencils. Okay, so this one I've had for almost two years. I've used it, used it, used it, used it, used it, used it. And it looks really pretty, but it still works just fine. Um, it's not super sticky. They tend to lose their stick after a while, but if you put it on your surface and just rub it down, I mean, it will stick good enough for you to be able to use these many, many, many times. Now, what is all the blue and the orange that you see? Um, well, that is an ink stain. And it's nothing to worry about. It's just kind of one of the normal things that happen with these stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com that um, when you use them with ink and it's a dark or strong color like orange or blue, it can have a tendency to leave a stain on the front of your stencil. But as long as you wash it promptly, um, and that's why I put mine in a little tub of water until I can get out of the kitchen um, to wash them in the kitchen sink. But as long as you wash them promptly, you might have staining and you may lose a little bit of your stick, but you, it should not hurt your stencils. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. Um, I want to know how many of you guys remember as a child, a little girl or a little boy, can you remember that feeling that you had when you saw some dandelions that had gone to seed and had not been blown yet. I can totally remember that. I can remember making all kinds of silly wishes on dandelions. I can remember actually inhaling some of those little seed things into my mouth, <laughs> um, trying to get every single um, little seed thing off of them. Um, but we're gonna do some uh, stenciling with that idea. And um, I guess the dandelion, there's a legend that if you um, can blow every single one of the little pieces that look like this off all at the same time, that they'll go to you, the person you love and they will love you back. That's um, just a legend. 
Uh, now, I personally don't believe in luck. I do believe in God's favor, but I don't believe in luck. Um, so, I wouldn't wish for something on a dandelion as an adult, but as a child, I definitely did. And I love the design of this stencil. Okay, so it came, it's a whole big stencil that says, a dream is a wish your heart makes. And then, so it has the words with a couple of these little, what are these things called? I can't even remember. And then it has this, and then it has a couple other spots that have the little dandelion seed thingy-mabobs after they've been blown off of this. Um, so you can cut your stencils up. You could use it all in one piece, but when you're working on something like a pair of jeans, it is definitely easier to cut it into smaller pieces. Okay, so we're going to be mixing two colors of ink, and I'll show you what I've already done, and then we're going to do something on the bottom of one of the legs. Um, but we're going to mix mostly the white ink with just a smidge of this glittering gold ink. I don't know how much it'll show up, but it'll tone down the white just a little bit. So I'm just going to do it on a paper plate. I don't really know how much I'm going to need. So I'll do that. And I'm just using these little stirs. <laughs> Diane says that she made lots of wishes as a child on dandelions. Me too. I grew up in this little town in um, Idaho. And there were a lot of dandelions. So I can remember doing that quite a bit. Okay, so I just put two blobs on my plate and I'm just gonna mix it up. I really, I don't know how this is gonna work exactly, but I just want a teeny bit of shimmer in there and I also want it to be not so bright white. Which white is what I used on this one. And also this denim is a darker tone than these jeans that we're gonna be working on, so it looks different. Okay, so I don't know if you knew that you can mix the inks to create custom colors. Don't mix ink and chalk paste. Um, first of all, the chalk paste cannot be made permanent to go on fabric. Only ink can to be washable. And you're going to want to wash your jeans or your jean jacket or whatever you might be making. So you need ink. And after it's fully dry, you'll heat set it with a hot iron. Okay, so I have this basically mixed up. And before I came live, this is just a pair of jeans from Target. Um, so don't try this out for the first time on your best jeans. Um, try it on a pair of jeans that, you know, are not your best ones, but, or something that you don't wear very often, but you wish you would. Um, so right here, this is on my left pocket, I cut out a piece from one of my Watson's cake boards. It's this thing right here. I usually use these things outside to spray when I'm going to use a clear matte sealer over a chalk paste project or if I want to spray my wood before I stencil it. Anyways, and I did this little patch right here just kind of like that right there on the pocket. And um, where you put the stencils on your apparel is completely personal preference. A lot of people like them on the pockets, but my pockets have stitching. So I don't know how that would work exactly. So I opted to do this pocket right here, front pocket, and I'm gonna do the bottom of the right leg in the front, okay? So, I cut another piece 
a longer piece of my Wilton cake board out. I don't know that I really even need it though because this is pretty flat. The pocket though had a lot of ripples um, because they have this inside lining. So I may not use it on the leg. I don't think I'm going to. Okay, and I'm going to use this. This piece right here. And let's, um, let's clean it up just a little bit. So what do you guys think? Do you like this idea? This is a cute stencil. And there's a lot of things that you could do with it. Um, yeah, it says, a dream is a wish your heart makes. Which that reminds me of the Disney... Is that what they say at Disney? That's the Disney saying? I'm not sure. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm on the outside part of my jeans. And I may just see if I can get it to lay relatively flat. So I could just slightly go over the edge. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to write on the back of it with a Sharpie, dandelion. And the lion's big. And this will help me know which side to put this stencil back on when I'm done because it is important that you put it back on the correct side of the carrier sheet. Terry Lovelace says that she loves the idea. So does Gail Carter. And Lisa Brown said that she loves this idea too. I do too. And this would be a cute t shirt as well. Or um, it would be super cute in the back of a jean jacket. Okay, I'm not going to fuzz this, even though it's the first time I've used this piece, because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to fuzz it on fabric when I'm about to use it on fabric. You know what I mean? I do want it to look like the stem of these is coming right out off the seam, seam on my cuff. And um, I'll just tell you right now that this spot right here that's right on the seam, it is not going to look perfect. There's just no way to get it to look perfect. And um, that's exactly what happened with this jacket it has a tendency to sort of collect excess ink, but that's okay. Uh, just, you know, do the best that you can. Okay, hopefully I mixed up enough of this, and it's a mix of the white ink and the gold ink. Hey Susie, how are you doing? You're finally on your way home. Have you been this whole time helping your friend? Um, Anyways, why won't it bleed? It won't bleed because this denim material is pretty tightly woven. But if you were doing it on a t-shirt, I'm feeling something, a lump under here. If you're doing it on a t-shirt or a tea towel, you definitely want to put something in between the layers. But this denim is pretty tightly woven. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a squeegee. Let's start at the bottom. Uh, when you're working with ink on fabric, you um, want to get all of your areas thoroughly covered, and then you want to stop. Because if you continue working your ink over and over and over, it can sometimes push too much of it underneath your stencil, and it doesn't it doesn't look great when that happens. Okay, I'm gonna try this one little piece right here. And on these jeans, it will probably take about two or three hours to be fully dry. And then I will use a hot iron set on cotton and I will um, heat set it with an iron, no steam, and I'll put a, a piece of parchment paper in between 
my iron uh, and what I'm going to be heat setting so I don't get anything on my iron. I think that's probably good. Let's take a peek. So can you guys see what I've got? It looks awesome! Oh my gosh, this is such a cute stencil. I've had it for a while. Oh my gosh, it's perfect! And let me throw this in my little tub. Honestly, I don't know why I haven't used it before. I guess I wasn't inspired until I saw that picture that I posted here earlier of that jean jacket that had the little dandelions in the back of it. You guys. Look how awesome that looks. I don't want to mess it up. It's nearly perfect. Even when I was going over the bump of the seam, oops. Okay, I need to lay it down and not move it because obviously I don't want to mess that up. But there are other pieces, so you could do more embellishing if you wanted. I just did this, um, was it the left? Yeah, the left pocket and the bottom of the right leg. And just one color, but you could go crazy and do whatever um, appeals to you. There is silver ink, there's also glittering gold ink, and then there's a huge variety of different colors. So, Charlene says she loves it. And Carol says it looks so pretty. Well, thank you, and thank you everyone for the stars. That's so nice. Uh, so, yes, you can still get that stencil, and I will be glad to send you a direct link to that one and also to the Mandela Lace in case you just want to look and so you don't have to hunt it down. And, um, and then once it's dry and I've heat set it, I will get some pictures. Um, I think these jeans fit me right now. I don't know. Uh, this COVID-20 thing is really a bummer. But anyways, I'll get pictures of that. And before I leave, I want to um, show you a couple other things real quick. Okay, so do you guys remember the t-shirts that we made the other day? I showed you how to put a ruffled sleeve from another t-shirt. We just cut off the bottom of another one that was the same um, on this one. And I wore it a few days ago. And I washed it. And I put it in the dryer. And it's great. Um, so I wanted to show you that just to let you know that you can do that. Um, that the, the glue, we used the, we used this. Sure Bonder fabric glue sticks. That works. It washes up well and everything. And then these are the completed tea towels that I did yesterday. And I showed you, this was the one I finished afterwards. I showed you how to make that ruffle. And then we did these adorable stencils on them. That was one. This was the one that I had done before I came live. And then this is the one that we did while we were live. So didn't they turn out cute? I'm just really trying to decide if I need more tea towels or if I should include these in my next blessing boxes. I don't know, but they turned out awesome. And then one more thing in case you missed this. On Sunday, during Christ and Crafting, this was the project. Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, my God, that is who you are. And this was my little attempt to draw the Red Sea parting so that Moses could lead the Israelites to safety. Um, so it's been a good last week, week and a half of crafting. And um, if you guys haven't seen those videos, you can watch them whenever you would like to here at DIY Dreaming. Um, just click on the videos tab. And then I have everything labeled. You can open up the one you want to watch. And tonight, if you can't sleep, you can uh, put on a pair of headphones and watch it at three, one of them at 3 a.m. 
or you know uh, while you're getting your fingernails done you could watch it or whatever um, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that and I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show you this is super easy super 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 easy um, and I cannot wait to wear them I hope, really hope these fit <laughs> so do a this that's a thumb or this that's a heart or say something to me in the comments. Oh, Terry says I draw beautifully. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you, Gloria says she loves the towels too. Um, so do a heart or a thumb in the comments or say something to me. Um, check to see if you've liked and followed this page. Um, feel free to sprinkle, all that good stuff. Okay, I just saw a question come by asking can you use a stencil twice in a row and the answer is it depends if you are super light with the amount of medium that you've put on it whether it's chalk paste or ink and you've scraped every single bit of excess off of it then and you're super careful picking it up and laying it back down again you can sometimes get away with that but I'm, I'm not uh, neat enough generally to do that. So I tend to wash my stencils in be and dry them in between each use. Um, it's just less risky that you're going to ruin your project or get a blob of something on it. Of course, if it's on a chalkboard or something you can wash off easily, that's no big deal. But if I had gotten a big blob of something on these jeans, I would be bumped. Okie dokie. Well, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for all those stars. That's awesome. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. If you want links to this stencil with the big dandelions or this one or any of the inks or honestly anything else, just say link and I'll get those for you so you don't have to hunt it down. Um, and I'll get pictures, like I said, after it's all dry and I've heat set it. And I'll put the pictures here in these comments as well as just on DIY Dreaming. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.